Content Native. What's up, guys? Um, I am joining you from the Bay Area this morning. It's a little bit cloudy, been nice and cool. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to I'm excited to talk with Todd and with you guys, and and, and hopefully learn some stuff. And um, I'm Todd Mesloni. I teach fifth grade math. Uh, we we'll do a flipped class, project based learning, blended environment um, in Texas. And so I'm at my region service center today at a training, uh, enjoying lunch break and coming to talk to you all about how we use some Google things in our class as well. Todd, do you want to start? Sure. Um, well, uh, the number one thing that I use in my class are the Google Forms. Um, have you all talked about Google Forms at all? Yeah. Yeah. I love them. Yes, they have I'm not, not an extremely organized person, um, and Google Forms has helped me dramatically. Um, one of the ways I use Google Forms is as a parent communication form. So anytime the parents want to talk to me, they fill out my Google Form, and then it puts it in a spreadsheet for me. So at the end of the six weeks, whenever I have to turn in a parent communication log, I don't have to do anything. Google's already done everything for me. Um, the other thing we do is when we do our flipped classroom, um, we use this model called a WISC, a WSQ, where they have to do what they watch, uh, or when they watched it, the summary of the video, and then a question. And the kids have the option of completing it uh, traditionally with paper and pencil, or completing it virtually uh, via the Google Hangout. And that way that organizes that for me as well, so I can see some of their responses even before they get to class. And then when they do come to class, I print it out and cut them apart and hand it to them so they still have access to what they typed. Dad, how do you, um, how do you share yeah. the forms with your, uh, with your parents and with your students? Um, well, that's, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the parents thing because I do use Google Forms as a uh, survey as well. I, I survey my students every single week via Google Forms about what they like, don't like, what they want to change. And I also survey parents twice a month um, about how their opinions of the flipped classroom are going so that I can really build an environment that is built around my parents and students. Um, but uh, with parents, um, I will either send them a Google shortened link and then um, do that and then, or I will, I embed it on my website. My parent communication form was at one point embedded on my website. It is no longer. Um, because I'm redoing it, um, but with my students, they get a link or have it embedded within their Edmodo accounts. Um, the WISCs are, if, if they go to my YouTube channel, there's a link to my WISC. If they go, go to do it on Sophia, then the, the WISC is embedded directly in Sophia. So I kind of do whatever works for whatever platform I'm using. If it allows me to embed, I always embed, just because that's the easiest and they don't have to leave the current website. But if I have to share it via a link, I'll use like goo.gl and um, shorten the link. And so the parents just get a really short link they have to type in to access the form. Carl? Do you use forms as well, Carl? I do. Um, Jason, I just tossed, uh, if folks are interested in the WISC, um, Crystal Kirch has a huge page on it. Um, and I just tossed that link in the chat if people want to check out kind of the, the logistics of that and what it is. Um, I use forms uh, a lot of times to kind of automate and control student documents. Um, one of the things that I really like about forms that uh, I've finally gotten down this summer is if you if you push a Google form out to kids, um, you get their name, their email address, their period number. Uh, you can then use a Google script called Doctopus. And what Doctopus does is it'll push a document out to kids, and you can push all kids the same document, or you can push different documents to different groups of kids. Um, and uh, you own that document, and you can tell kids when they – you, you own the editing rights on that document. So you can make kind of universal decisions about when the document is editable and when the document is not editable. So, you know, if it's due by 3 o'clock on Thursday, you can, you can turn off the editing rights for everybody on, uh, on Thursday at 3. Um, and that, that, that power is cool. Um, uh, but the thing that makes it even cooler for me is the ability to, to attach a, an associated rubric to this assignment. So by creating that, that rubric, you can then go through and score with that rubric what the, the work the students have done so far and type in some feedback. And then that rubric just gets pasted onto the bottom of the document. You can unembargo the documents. The students get editing rights back. They make some revisions. 
you give them more feedback. Uh, the, the second version of the rubric just pastes in directly below the first rubric. Um, and so it's a, it's a super easy way to have kids get a whole lot of feedback and give you um, a little bit of control over when they're editing that document. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to mess around with that a lot more this year. How do you spell Doctopus? D-O-C-T-O-P-U-S. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, another Google tool. Uh, this is all about feedback. Sorry, um, but I, I mean, just as a as a history teacher, uh, I think it's super important to to be reading and writing um, in class a lot. And so, um, one of the things, one of the other things that I use to give feedback is voice comments, which is a Chrome extension. And what that does is it allows you to take or to to take a Google Doc and to highlight sections of the Google Doc and leave kids feedback about parts of, the, of their, their writing that's awesome or parts that need improvement. Um, students can then hear that feedback. They can resolve certain aspects of it just like it's a, it's a comment in a Google Doc. They can leave questions for you um, if, if some of the feedback doesn't make sense. Um, and, and voice comments is really, really, really blew my mind at the end of the last school year. Um, I found myself leaving more and better feedback and doing it about half the time that it was taking me or maybe a third of the time that it was taking me to leave um, written feedback on student documents. So that that really was a kind of an efficiency and a time saver for me. Voice comments and that's uh, an, uh, an extension? Yeah, it's a Chrome extension. If you Google voice comments Chrome, um, if, if that's your search term, I think it's the first uh, search item that comes up. And you install it, and then you just open the document with voice comments, and you can start uh, highlighting and leaving feedback for kids on um, their document. Um, another great tool that uh, we use, this is built into your drive. So when you go into your drive to create a document or create a spreadsheet or create a form, at the bottom of that create list, it says connect more apps. And that's where you can go and add a bunch of website or apps that are tie in directly to your drive. So I have my kids add in apps like PicMonkey, uh, MoveNote, WeVideo. And what that allows them to do is it pretty much takes away the need for a second login. So one of our more popular ones that we use is MoveNote. And MoveNote is one word. Um, when you go and connect more apps and then search for it, they'll give you like four options, and we use the one for education, ties it directly into our account, and what MoveNote allows the kids to do is they can create a presentation via the Google presentation tool, and then they can use the create and go to MoveNote, and they upload their Google presentation into MoveNote, and then in the top left-hand corner, they are able to video record themselves while they present the presentation and record the entire process. And so as soon as they're done, MoveNote takes that entire recording and puts it back into their drive. They can embed it, they can share it via a link, they can do whatever, but it's a really cool way to have kids present a project that they have created virtually uh, where you can see them talking in the corner, but you can also see the presentation as they go from slide to slide. It's very fluid. It's it's a really easy. I did not even show my fifth graders how to do it. I just told them upload your thing and do it, and they did it and figured it out and did awesome. Um, and I can send you some of those links, Jason, uh, if I get the chance, and so y'all can see some of their move notes. Um, but I love Move Note because of the ease and the fact that it throws everything right back into your drive. And if you go to Move Note from the uh, Google Drive, you don't have to log into MoveNote. It takes your Google information and creates an account and logs you in straight from there. So it takes away the need for kids to constantly be logging into different websites or have to have an email or whatever. Um, the other one is WeVideo. Um, WeVideo allows them to upload a video and then be able to edit it. And so um, my kids like the editing tools. Um, the other one, and I just remembered this one, we, we used it a little bit, but I plan on using it more this next year. It's called Video Notes, but the way you spell it when you're looking for it is the word video, and then N-O-T period E-S. So it looks like video not E-S, 
but when you add it into your drive, what you can do is you can take an embed link from any video you've created, put it into video notes, and then you can take notes on the page while the video is playing. But what Video Notes does is it memorizes exactly where you're taking those notes. So when the video is done playing, if you click on a part of your notes, it will take you right back to the video where you took that note in the video. And so it's a really great way for being able to take notes while your kids are watching something and then be able to access exactly when in the video they saw that when they were taking those notes. And again, all those are completely free. They are built in directly to Drive. Um, so the kids can use them very easily. That sounds great. Can you take us back to the, the uh, move thing that you were talking about? If I have uh, the presentation to say open, where would I find that? Well, um, when you go into move, when you go into move note, um, right in the middle of the screen, it'll have an add content button. And whenever you click on that, it'll access your drive, and you can upload directly from your drive into MoveNote. How, how do I get the MoveNote? Um, well, uh, when you're in your drive, you click Create, just like if you were going to create a new document or spreadsheet. And MoveNote should be in there. If it's not, you need to go to the bottom of that list where it says Connect More Apps. And you need to search for MoveNote and then add it to your drive. And then after you do that, it'll be underneath there whenever you go to create. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. I skipped this step. <laughs> you have one last bit of Google information advice or uh, anything to, to share with us before we have to head to a different place? Just get kids creating and collaborating on Google Docs. I mean, it, it, whether they're making presentations or, or writing together, I mean, so much of uh, people run around, they talk about technology tools so much. Really, if you're not using technology tools to create, I'm, I'm not interested because that's the power of these devices that we're putting in kids' hands. So get kids out, get them on Docs, get them collaborating, get them making knowledge together. Um, and, and I mean, I think that's the biggest thing, just getting out of their way, because, man, they do some really cool stuff if you just give them the space to do that. And the other thing I really enjoy about Google is that there is no messing it up. You can always revert back to old revisions, and so you never have to worry about having the kids screw something up where you can't come back from it. Um, you can always fix it. And what I always tell teachers when they're trying new technology is I don't ever tell my kids how to use certain websites. I let them go on and play for about 20 or 30 minutes. They figure out tricks and tips better than I could even do it. I mean, one example is we were working in Google presentations, and one of my kids wanted to make one of his images transparent. He could put text behind it. I didn't know how to do that. And so I said, I don't know how to do that, so you're going to have to figure it out. Five minutes later, he had it figured out. He trained the entire class how to do it. And so take advantage of the knowledge that your kids already have, because most of the time, they figure out things about 100 times faster than we do anyway. So true. Very good. Uh, before we let you go, I want to see if anybody has any questions about anything that they said or anything else. Are we going to get a list of all those things? That you sure. mentioned the. Sure. Someone's writing that down. Someone's writing it down? No, I hope so. Oh, please tell me. I got a couple of them. I hope that somebody wrote Jason, down everything you Jason, I can tweet yeah. them out to you so you can have them. I'll just tweet them right now so you can have them as well, the ones that I mentioned. Yes, that would be good. Thank yes, you. that would be good. I have some of them, but not all of them. Most of those are on the outline as well. Um, I do oh. have them on there. So we'll be going over those this afternoon, too. So whatever he doesn't have, we'll actually have the outline, too. Very good, guys. Thanks a lot from Texas and California and uh, and sort of Wisconsin. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me. It was it was fun. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Take care, guys. Rest your day. Thanks.